Our market landscape today is clearly unique on many fronts. One constant for many ESG investors is the search for new or different ways of integrating impact investing into their portfolios. Here with us to discuss one potentially unique option that is donor advised funds is Rick Davis, managing partner at Lojas Advisors. Rick, thank you for joining us. Glad I could be here. Well, first of all, if you could just share with us, what are donor advised funds and how are they used for impact investing? Yeah, donor advised funds or, or DAS, as they're often called uh, for short, are philanthropic and social impact investment tools that allow individual, family and corporate donors to fund special accounts through what are called DAF sponsor organizations. Uh, donors receive immediate income tax deductions and maintain allocation privileges over the fund's distribution. Um, and, and due in part to their simplicity as a tax avoidance strategy, DAFs, DAFs have exploded in use in recent years with well over $100 billion in assets now in donor advised funds. Um, and for the purpose of, of our discussion, the interesting aspect uh, to the impact investing world is that DAFs are largely untapped sources for social impact investment, uh, and that's starting to change. So you mentioned them, you mentioned that they are tax avoidance strategies, and um, that term probably doesn't seem to be the most positive term <laughs> to use, but it, it definitely is what it is. Is that the key reason that a lot of, I suppose, high net worth individuals or institutions would invest in a DAF? Or are there other qualities that are equally as high as that particular one? Yeah, no, there are, there are a variety of benefits of a, of a donor advised fund. Um, the, the tax avoidance aspect is, is sort of where it starts from an income perspective. Uh, as you look at different ways, you know, you make a charitable donation, you set up a donor advised fund, you set up a private foundation. Each of those things has uh, benefits uh, to uh, you know to the party uh, setting them up um, or to their advisor advising them to set it up. Um, the interesting aspects about some of those things, of course, are trying to get them directed in areas uh, that are important to the donor. And what we try to do is help uh, help donors engage with areas of interest to them, leveraging the funds they've already set aside and donor advised funds. Okay, great. So in looking at the use case for institutional investors who might be leveraging donor advised funds for their portfolio in today's environment, how could these funds support investment objectives even during downturns in the market? Well, you know, the, the nice thing about donor advised funds, and, and it, you know, it even ties in a little bit to our you know, current crises, um, is that uh, you know, not only are they untapped in large part, uh, in, you know, as I've already mentioned, um, but they are an ideal of, uh, source of capital for investing in, you know, for example, healthcare ventures uh, that, that might address some of the issues that we're currently facing or solutions that might, uh, you know, social solutions that might uh, support those hardest hit. Um, traditional portfolios, uh, as you've noted, may have been adversely impacted by uh, recent stock market gyrations and making certain folks less likely to invest their capital in social or economic recovery until they know where the bottom is for their portfolios and the shell shock wears off. Um, but, but DAF capital, remember, has already been donated. Uh, so these are risk-free funds. These are funds that have already been set aside. Um, and to some extent, you know, we need them invested in, in invest, you know, in these kinds of uh, societal need endeavors now more than ever. Um, so, you know, if, if, if there is an institution or individual investor who enjoyed a prosperous 2019 and, uh, you know, perhaps maybe they're taking advantage of the extended uh, U.S. income tax deadline, if they haven't already set up a DAF, uh, they should be telling their tax or wealth advisor uh, to make that part of their uh, 2019 tax plan. Um, but if you already have a DAF, um, this is certainly the time to be considering deploying those funds uh, in, in ventures that might be addressing you know, virus outbreak issues, for example. So a very timely perspective considering those extensions are underway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a bit about data collection and reporting. Interested to see how reporting may play a role in direct investing into impact companies or funds. 
Well, it's, it's in short, it's critical. Um, I can probably give you a variety of examples, but, but I'll give you one. Um, we've done some work uh, with a digital health and social impact fund called Digital DX Ventures. They're a fantastic woman-led, gender-focused impact venture fund uh, that zeroes in on companies leveraging AI and big data to develop solutions for early detection of, of big, big healthcare challenges like cancer, heart and kidney health, Alzheimer's, things like that. Um, but it's important to their socially minded investors how the fund tracks its performance, um, both through the companies in which they invest and the actions of those companies um, and comparing those against the fund's stated sustainable development goals. Um, as you know, that, that affects the desire of their investors to support the fund in the short term and in subsequent funds. Um, and, you know, so those are the kinds of things that uh, we see all the time. And, uh, you know, notably Digital DX uh, in, the, in the light of sort of the broader DAS's impact investment tools uh, is a great example of the types of compelling social impact investments that can be made from a donor advised fund. Definitely. So in looking at this example, um, which can clearly be a use case for any point, whether the market is doing well or doing poorly, I want to just take it back to looking at the pandemic, but looking a little beyond that, looking into 2021, for example, how can donor advised tools be used specifically um, as a recovery acceleration tool? Do you see a use case for it for 2021 that maybe wouldn't have been the case, say, at, at where we are now? Uh, I, I do, you know, beyond the, the way I was just discussing in the sense of, of deploying those funds that, uh, that, 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 that are already set aside or that will be being set aside as it relates to 2019, uh, you know, tax, uh, tax extensions. The, you know, the, the, there are a variety of ways that, um, you know, DAS can be very powerful mechanisms for investing in. Uh, for-profit social impact companies, funds, projects, things of that nature. Um, but but it, but clearly not everyone has the time to dedicate to evaluating individual DAF investments, uh, even if you're working in conjunction with our team. Um, but at the same time, there's significant interest in supporting virus prevention or recovery-related ventures and solutions. Uh, so one thing we're doing is exploring establishing a directed DAF, um, which is a in essence, a repository held by the designated DAF sponsor, so the nonprofit institution, in which all funds are earmarked exclusively for a specific investment theme. In this case, it would be virus prevention, uh, such as healthcare innovations or, or virus recovery, uh, which could touch a wider sort of social or economic impact area. Um, and we're currently uh, looking for and working with parties that might be anchor tenant investors, if you will. Um, on this coronavirus directed DAF. And continuing along those lines with funds that are earmarked for those exclusive channels, such as virus prevention, et cetera, could you name possibly three things that you see in the future in terms of DAFs that might take the market by surprise? So a direction that you see DAFs perhaps going in the future or how you see it complementing other areas that institutional investors are already focused on? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a... Uh, well, one, I'll, I'll just start by saying, you know, healthcare is an obvious choice. Um, there are a variety of so social impact healthcare related uh, solutions, funds, projects out there that I think will continue to be, uh, first of all, it's, it's probably the hottest investment area um, around right now, but I think it will be a heavily focused area um, from, from donor advised funds. And so I think we'll continue to see that. Uh, I also think we will uh, you know, begin to see more investment from corporations um, leveraging their own donor advised funds. Uh, you know, they can provide a simple mechanism for the for companies making strategic investments in mission aligned companies uh, that that complement their own business model or further a stated impact goal. So, if a corporation's come out and said we care about X, uh, you know, then using their donor advised funds to invest in for profit ventures around that cause, I think we'll see more of. Um, but one of the most compelling use cases we talk about in using uh, DAFs uh, is using them as instructional tools. And, and this is not one that uh, a lot of folks think about, but uh, I'll give you an explanation. So due to the risk-free nature of DAF investments, uh, remember the funds have already been given away. So the, 
the predetermined ROI for the donor is negative 100%, right? They're, they're not expecting to get anything back. It's been set aside. Um, but because of that, uh, DAS can serve as an ideal investment training ground for children and, and young adults. Um, not only are, are children provided with the, the opportunity to invest in the socially and environmentally impactful areas that they're already you know, most interested in, um, but also you know, the, their parents and grandparents can establish a legacy of giving to causes the family cares about in a way that's at the same time instructive in essential areas of traditional private investing, you know, performing due diligence, uh, structuring deals, evaluating returns. Uh, in essence, DAFs in this regard can serve as de facto impact venture capital funds with donors or their children or grandchildren serving as fund managers. Wow, that's great. So from the healthcare social impact use case to possible venture capital type use cases to using DAFs as an instructional tool for children around social impact. Sounds like there's a lot more to come as we move into the next phase of this year and hopefully into recovery. A lot more to come from DAFs. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're just at the early stages of this. And one thing to note uh, is this isn't something that donor advised fund sponsors uh, have been doing uh, you know for, for, for a while this is a relatively uh, n- new new domain um, it's uh, you know most uh, DAF sponsors don't allow DAFs to be used as for-profit impact investment mechanisms and those that do often offer sort of a limited selection investment options for donors um, but there are some DAF sponsors who are showing greater flexibility and DAFs can typically be transferred to other sponsors that better support donors' impact investing goals. Um, And we work with our clients, existing DAF sponsors, to try and get them to enable the types of investing our clients would like. And if that's not going to happen, we help clients transfer their DAFs to sponsors that that offer that capability. Um, But I do think we will be seeing more and more of that. We're already seeing a bunch of it, but we will begin to see more and more of this kind of investing uh, out, out of DAFs. Rick Davis, Managing Partner at Lojas Advisors. Rick, thank you so much for joining us. We invite you to subscribe to the Refinitive Sustainability Perspectives podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you stream your content. What did you think about the podcast? Leave us a review on iTunes or follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for updates on our show. You can even check us out on YouTube now. Thank you for joining. See you next time.